I'm Hai Fabi from Wuhan University. And in this talk, I will introduce the new study group of the IJS Ions Ferry um, working group called Ions Ferry Mapping Function. And so, um, in this talk, I will firstly explain uh, why we established this study group, its objectives, and current members. Uh, then the first uh, group activity and the, the very initial results on the case study, uh, the last day work plan. Uh, as we know, the IJS gene products are provided in two dimensions. The 2D modeling, the essential uh, modeling, avoids uh, uh, solving the um, undetermined equation in 3D. However, this uh, 2D modeling gives rise to the vertical to stand commercial, commercial errors, i.e. the atmospheric net function errors. Uh, during times uh, with high TC values, these errors can reach 10 meters for vertical, adaptor, uh, for vertical delay estimates, even in the flight day. These errors cannot be neglected. Uh, especially in the equator regions uh, with large atmospheric horizontal gradients. So with increasing numbers of GSS user in mass markets and there are greater demands for uh, precise uh, uh, positioning service. So how to mitigate the atmospheric life function errors remains uh, the perennial challenge of GSS positioning. That's why we have this study group. Uh, the objectives include first the comprehensive assessment of uh, selected uh, atmospheric mapping function models uh, in order to provide useful statistics to GSS users. And second, we might, uh, yeah, our, our goal is to provide new potential IGS atmospheric products. Uh, lastly, we would like to uh, examine the uh, impact of the atmospheric mapping function models uh, on the precision performance. So currently, we, we have uh, eight members from different institutes, uh, including young doctors and uh, senior scientists. And we also welcome uh, contributions from, from new active members. So last month we had our first online meeting to discuss the first uh, uh, group activity, uh, the assessment of the following uh, atmospheric mapping function models. So I will go through the, those models in the next slide. Also uh, about the validation technique uh, in the atmospheric domain, we take the DSTC assessment. Um, in the positioning domain, we will examine the impact of uh, uh, atmospheric mapping function models on, on the positioning performance. So first, the first type of uh, uh, atmospheric mapping function models are like a single layer models. Uh, we will include a single layer model with shell height of 350 km and 450 km. <coughs> Uh, um, and also uh, the modified single layer model. Uh, in addition, they will, the second type are, are the dual layer or multi layer atmospheric mapping function models. Uh, the multi layer models, model proposed by the DLR team, um, takes into account the atmospheric uh, horizontal gradients and vertical structure. The vertical electron density uh, distribution is described by the Chapman layer assumption. Different from the, the multi-layer model, the UPC proposed the dual layer model uh, with the vertical structure directly derived from uh, GMSS dual layer tomography. So this, this uh, they're about to, uh, sorry, the about two, uh, two models we mentioned. Uh, yeah, also we have experts, uh, and with expertise on this, we, we, we can get their support. And 
and the upper group member Raza from Natural Resources Canada has worked on the comparison of different uh, uh, atmospheric model, uh, mapping function models, and also apply them with combination of uh, atmospheric maps and the DCB products to the single frequency PDP. Uh, regarding the assessment, um, as we know, the DSTC assessment has been successfully applied in the IJS uh, G product evaluation and combination, as mentioned by by Manuel and Nimbo in the previous talks. Uh, in 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 this assessment, we take the DSTC observable <coughs> reference not only because it's precise and accurate. But because it's uh, very sensitive to atmospheric lamp function quality. So here we show the, the uh, case study uh, on a relatively quiet day in year uh, 2014 in the solar max. Uh, they uh, the single layer model with shell height for 150 kilometer. Uh, it, is examined for the station in this slide or ID which is located in the northern mid latitude. In in the upper middle plot we uh, we show that the red points uh, represent the DSTC truth and the green points uh, represent the, the DSTC error with this single layer model. We, we can see the, the large DSTC errors uh, occurring in the low elevation. Um, and some of the errors are larger than 100 TCU. When we look at the, the, uh, the Akiki's elevation distribution, we can find that the red points, the red points uh, uh, refer to the DSTC errors larger than 100 TCU. We can find that those those errors correspond the LOS uh, southward, directing the equator. Um, from from this plot, uh, the DSTC error versus the GPS time, we can we can see these the large errors uh, happen in the afternoon of GPS time. And Yeah, from the T, from the VTC and VTC gradient animation, uh, which uh, which for the, the the afternoon we we can find we can confirm that the the larger horizontal gradients explain the larger larger the axial mapping function errors here. Yeah, now now the the large <coughs> gradient happens so corresponding to the stops word the LOS. Yeah. Uh, in this slide, we show the daily RMS error of DSTC versus the latitude uh, for different uh, elevation ranges. Uh, we examined the single layer model with a shell height 450 kilometer in red and 350 kilometer in, in green. In general, we can find the large, uh, larger atmospheric mapping function errors in the low latitudes and, and smaller errors in the, um, in the, in the mid, mid latitudes. But we, we, can, we should notice the, sorry, should notice the, there is a small increase of errors in the, in the, in the high latitudes, so we should pay attention to the, the large atmospheric, atmospheric uh, horizontal gradient in low latitudes and in high latitudes. And this for, for all the elevation statistics. So in, in this case, we can we can see the uh, single layer model with 450 kilometer in the in rough performance better uh, results. So 
about the work plan, as I mentioned before, uh, the assessment of selected atmospheric mapping function models will cover different regions, different uh, atmospheric conditions, including low and high solar activities, and also the geomagnetic storms. Uh, it also will cover the low elevation. Regarding uh, assessment, we consider the assessment in the atmospheric domain. Uh, we will use the DSTC evaluation as it's a, a very clean reference. Uh, we will also study the impact of the atmospheric mapping functions uh, on the uh, GNSS positioning for the GNSS users. We will also investigate a new atmospheric mapping function model. So that's uh, the current state of the newly born study group. Thank you for your attention.